in a tent pizzeria. I don't think it's a secret that the main reason people compare Freddy Fazbear's to Chuck E. Cheese is because it's it's the same shtick. I think it's pretty obvious. Obvious enough, in fact, that I don't really need to talk about it, but this is going out in like two weeks' time, so I needed numbers, okay? I'm literally filming this on the day that Security Breach is supposed to come out. So anything that relates it to Chuck E's, if any, since this is one that takes place in a, a giant mall, and I don't think Chucky's has done that, it, it won't be on the list because the game doesn't release for like another seven hours. But I haven't heard of any other children's pizzerias with animatronics and all like the hoopla of cardboard pizza. I mean, like there there may be some overseas, but in the states where this game takes place and where the creator is from, I don't think that there's any competitors to Chuck E. Cheese. The idea of a pizzeria with robot animatronics that sing is pretty unique. So I. I I think that's fairly obvious. Also the name, Freddy, Fazbear, Chucky, Cheese, and at nine animatronics. Now not only are the animatronics just kind of the same, since you know they're all anthropomorphized animals, but even the characters seem the same. The inspiration for Chica could be one of many things, but most notably, in this case at least, one of Chucky's friends from the Chuck E. Cheese lineup is called Helen Henny, which would make a lot of sense given the alliteration in Chica's name and the fact that they're both chickens. Helen Henny and Chica the Chicken I think are pretty obviously meant to be connected, and while Bonnie and Freddy may not have direct comparisons, I think that like the whole like it's a pizzeria thing, the animatronics are pretty solid evidence as, as to why they're the same as well. Plus, Foxy may be in in some ways based on the character of Rolf the Wolf from the Rock of Fire Explosion, Chauve's Pizza Places Animatronic Band, which is also a part of, of Chucky's group, as they both have their own stage apart from the other characters, and both animatronics are animals part of the Canidae family, or Canidae family. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but that, that's just like foxes, wolves, dogs, etc. And it ate arcade. And while plenty of places have arcades, I mean like hell, even like cousin has an arcade, but that's because he's absolutely rolling in it. The main comparison is the whole prize counter thing. Not many places have a prize counter, but it is certainly not exclusive to Chucky's. A uh, bowling alley in my hometown has one, uh, Dave and Buster's has one, the list goes on. I mean, if they really want to generate like a customer base based on the arcade, they usually have a prize counter. But I think that it's the arcade and prize counter in combination with everything else that kind of solidifies it as being a Chucky e. Cheese. Only Chucky's has all three of these previous points and even for me I haven't gone to a Chucky's in God knows how long but I can still picture the arcade clear as day and all I need to do to change that memory into a memory of being at a Freddy Fazbear's is just change the animatronics. I can change them simply enough since it's not really a memory and really a recreation of a memory like how the Rick uploads the virus in the season 3 premiere of Rick and Morty since he makes a totally fabricated origin story which we have since learned at least has a little bit of truth to it. So basically it's like that, okay? Take parts of something that I remember and change small things about it and then boom I'm in Freddy Fazbear's. Change Chucky to Freddy and the, the guy in the costume dancing with the kids is, is a Bonnie now, and now he's leading kids to the back room where the other animatronics are. Oh no. And it's seven headlines. The Twitter account of Diamond Zia on June 27, 2020, tweeted out three photos with the line of, quote, FNAF will be real in 48 hours. These pictures were of news articles, one from USA Today titled, Five Children Have Gone Missing Inside Chuck E. Cheese, Parents Report Smells Coming, dot, dot, dot. One from Associated Press called, Post Hour Worker at Chuck E. Cheese Reported Dead at 27. And a final one from the Something News titled, Night Shift Workers at Chuck E. Cheese claim strange movements from animatronics during post hours. However, this title had animatronics spelt incorrectly. It said, uh, animatronics. Everyone was freaking out, understandably, and the pictures of the articles, particularly the first one, were shared all across the internet. People were losing their minds, especially because this is around the time where Chuck E. Cheese was announcing their closure. However, people didn't realize that that these were just fake. Well, how are they fake, you ask? It's simple. Source code editing. You can change what anything says on a website using like source code inspection, but it will only change for you. Like until you like reload the page like by editing the source code. You just need to like find the aspect you're looking for, and then once you do, you can change it to whatever you want. So whoever made the original image had found an article about Chuck E. Cheese closing from USA Today, and then changed the title to Five Children Going Missing, and the same thing with the other articles. Hence why there are only images of the articles and not actual links. It was a hoax that blew up and honestly probably hurt Chuck E. Cheese even 
even more. And at six, closing. Also the fact that due to COVID, cause you know, global pandemic, a load of Chuck E. Cheese locations were closing, isn't helping the comparison to FNAF. Considering how multiple Chuck E. Cheese locations closed as well, not just the one. Like I said, some people were blaming these closings on missing children and other things, like in the last point, but that's not really the case. They were just starting to lose too much money to keep their restaurants operational, so they just had to close some of them. Did they close a location in Hurricane Utah where the games take place? No. But they closed one in Layton, Utah, which is like a four hour drive from Hurricane. <laughs> Hurricane is actually closer to Las Vegas than it is to, to Layton. So I think we're safe to say that these pizzerias are safe from killing sprees, hopefully. And even rebranding part of their kitchen to Pascali's Pizza and Wings didn't really do them much good. But it helped Matt Patton get a hold of a pizza to test it to see if the Chuck E. Cheese pizzas were reassembled or if they were just born that way in a food theory. Um, and turns out they're just born that way. Halfway through into number five, Real Pizzeria. Before the release of FNAF 4, Scott Cawthon's website was littered with references to the numbers eight and seven in the source code. This caused many fans and even dear old Matt Pat to think that these were references to the year 1987, when the famous frontal lobe bite occurred. However, other fans believed that these were coordinates. So after plugging them into Google Maps somehow, which honestly I don't understand how you would have gone about doing that, like, do you just like type all the numbers in? Like, I don't know, I tried it and it didn't work. Whatever. After putting them into Google Maps somehow, they found a location that it actually gave. And the location was an actual pizzeria. Obviously, once this got shared, fans of the franchise started harassing the place trying to get answers. And while it was all one big coincidence, someone might have caught on before. Kathy Blockus reviewed the pizzeria saying that the robots kill. And I saw a robot fox killing a kid before in there. Run for your lives out of there. This was left three weeks before FNAF 4 was announced, which is when all the 8s and 7s appeared on the website. So while this is incriminating, they also left the place five stars on that review where they said that they were watching people get murdered. So obviously they're just a fan of the franchise. And at 4, FNAF 4 Bite. FNAF 4 may be one of the most confusing games in the franchise with seemingly nobody having solved it to this day unless Scott just hasn't mentioned it. But the Bite of 83, which takes place at the end of this game, makes these scarily like a real FNAF location. Not because something like this has happened before, or at least as far as I can tell from my research, but because this isn't a death that has to do with possessed animatronics or crazy technology or resurrected purple people being bruised from the inside thanks to an amalgam of animatronic parts. No, this just has to do with an animatronic being given way too much juice. Matt Pat tackled this exact topic in a theory back from 2017, where he determined that to cause a catastrophic brain failure like we see Crying Child suffer in that bite, each of the eight teeth that he gets bit with would have had to been applying over 14,000. Newtons of force. 14,758 Newtons of force to be exact. Which, like I've been saying, is serious overkill for moving an animatronic head. That would require multiple industrial grade pneumatic actuators that you wouldn't be able to fit in the suit, okay? This isn't a spring lock failure, like a lot of people say. This was something that is tangible in this reality. And that's probably even more terrifying than all of the jump scares at once. Getting close to the end in number three, disturbing desires. Okay, so this is something that while not directly translating into like the FNAF world or from FNAF to our world, it's a serious issue that I've seen in the comments, okay? So we've made a series of videos about how we could turn a closed Chuck E. Cheese location into a FNAF joint or even all of them into FNAF joints, but you see, in the comments of those videos, which you should totally go watch by the way, links in the icon, and then share the videos with Scott because that sounds like a fun project even if it's just like for a week, please. I, if Mr. Beast can open a fast food chain, Scott, I'm sure you can make FNAF real. The comments of those videos, okay, are full of various people telling me that they think it would be a great idea to have a real FNAF because then they could go and, and, and die in the, in the restaurant and possess an animatronic. Um. What? Why the absolute hell would you want that? First of all, okay, possession isn't real. That's not a thing in real life. I have yet to see any real evidence 
about it or anything paranormal, okay? But in addition to that, even going by FNAF rules, you would need to suffer heavily when you die in order to generate the agony that is needed to possess something. Since in FNAF, all possession is actually just a manifestation of your extreme agony grabbing onto something that's nearby, as we learned from Fazbear Frights and Dr. Phineas Taggart. If you're happy that you're in the FNAF restaurant and you're happy that you're dying there so you can possess something, you wouldn't end up possessing something because you wouldn't be in agony. You'd be happy. So, this is just a bad idea overall. Don't do it. And ultimately, in a number two employee manual. <laughs> oh, well, do you think that I'm talking about the FNAF employee manual? <laughs> Absolutely not. I wish it was. Uh, th this number is actually much more concerning than that. Because a particular image sent people into a frenzy with the idea that Chuck E. Cheese restaurant animatronics are actually gonna hurt you. A post from Twitter user at Pablo Thinghouse made mention of the restaurant's instruction manual, which is for employees, which included a section that said Chuck E. Cheese himself had facial recognition software that would cause him to come to life and attack any intruders caught on the property after hours. Sound familiar, anyone? <laughs> With the actual manual in the now hidden or deleted tweet saying, quote, it is always important that all Chuck E. Cheese night shift employees must wear a spare Chuck E. Cheese costume head to avoid any animatronic facial recognition, because if they spot any humans in the building post hours, they will automatically detect that person as a criminal trying to tamper with objects on the building, and that won't lead to anything good. And Pablo's reaction was probably realistic here, since they said, quote, uh, excuse me? And the fact that this is supposed to be the actual manual makes me sad. However, I looked it up, and it's not the case, but th this is still kind of freaky. And finally, in a number one, Nathan Dunlap. In December of 1993, after Chuck E. Cheese had closed in Aurora, Colorado, Margaret Kohlberg, the manager, was tallying receipts in the back room. While she does that, though, Bobby Stevens scrubs down the kitchen, and Sylvia Crawwell, Ben Grant, and Colleen O'Connor all work in cleaning the main area. However, there is someone hiding in the bathrooms, 19-year-old Nathan Dunlap. Earlier that year, he had been working there as a crook, before getting into an argument over his hours, which resulted in him losing his job. He was looking for revenge. He exited the washroom and began firing, killing everyone in the building. First Sylvia, then Ben, then Colleen. Then he went into the kitchen, where the bullet entered Bobby's jaw and sent him flying across the room. And then Nathan went to the back, where Margaret opened up the safe before being shot twice. Nathan then filled her bag with $1,500 cash and arcade tokens and keychains. Thanks to the security cameras, he was promptly arrested and sentenced to death. But Bobby did end up surviving, luckily, and he was actually able to testify at Nathan's trial. I got this theory from Matt Pat in his first ever game theory on FNAF, because he was relating it to the events of the actual series. But um, the fact that this lines up so well is, is pretty terrifying. And while it may not be true that it's based off of that, um, I think those stories are a, a little too close to just not think about it. There are plenty of people who'd like a real life Freddy Fazbear's pizza, and honestly, it could be closer than we think. Whether it's being delayed because of COVID or some other factor that we can't account for, a real life Freddy Fazbear's would be fun as hell, no pun intended. There were people asking Matt Pat and Scott to work together to make it happen, but guess what? I've come up with a strategy that could totally work even if it may need some tweaking because it's the US and I'm working with like Canadian prices and laws and stuff But it could still translate to an actual plan that can really work to get us a real-life Freddy Fazbear's pizza Except hopefully without the murder and convoluted story that we don't totally understand I even made a couple mock-ups so that this can actually happen So share this with Scott on reddit if you want to see a real-life Freddy Fazbear's and let me jump in Firstly location location location, right? The obvious answer here is to go with the closed Chuck E. Cheese location Location. Chuck E. Cheese recently has closed 34 locations across the U.S., with locations closing in California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Iowa, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, Nevada, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, South Dakota, Texas, Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin. So, any of these locations could be used as a potential first location at the 
very least, with some states having multiple closures. Buying one of these locations would be expensive, and online I couldn't find any real reports on how much it would be. You'd have to work that out with Chuck E. Cheese. However, to open and operate a Chuck E. Cheese location would range from $1.17 million to $1.83 million, with a franchise fee of $800,000, according to Chuck E. Cheese's section of FranchiseHelp.com. So assuming the higher end of the price range, this would require an investment of around $2.63 million. Not taking into account that these locations are closed and they're probably just looking to break even on it and maybe not make money. But which state should we be selecting? Well, looking on Google Trends, we can actually see what states search for Five Nights at Freddy's the most. Looking for the search term Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, since, you know, that would be the name of the location, we see Virginia searching it the most over the past 12 months, as of April 2021, followed by Florida, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Texas in that order. Comparing that to our list of states, Virginia is the state with the highest search and has a close location in Fredericksburg. And I don't know about you, but the fact that it's in Fredericksburg, you know, like Freddy, that seems like fate to me. But there is also the thought of Florida, who is the second most searched and is only slightly less searched, so like it's like a close second, and has multiple Chuck E. Cheese restaurants closed, located in Miami, North Lauderdale, Miami Gardens, and Green Acres. So there is room for expansion. Florida is also a popular tourist spot thanks to the Disney Park in Orlando where I would go with my family. I think we've went like two or three times. So it's probably a better idea to go with Florida's Miami location, even though Orlando and Miami aren't really that close, but it's still centralized, okay? And everything's open in Florida, so you can start work on it right away. So the Miami Chuck E. Cheese location is the first one to be bought by Scott Cawthon. What would it look like? Well, many fan creations always make it appear the same as just a normal Chuck E. Cheese, but replacing the logo and text. Probably the most famous one being the image used in MatPat's old FNAF theories. But we could take this one step further. Since the inside of the restaurant is already seen in game, we can take that same design concept and just convert it to real life. I feel like that's pretty obvious. With the red and black squares along the wall, potentially outlined with additional decoration, you would also need to either replace or repaint the tables and booths and stuff like that, along with replacing the posters on the wall and the banners hanging above. The purple would also be changed to another color, most likely red, or maybe Maybe more of the red and black square pattern we see along the walls in the first couple games. The animatronics, if included, could easily be updated with Freddy, Chica, and Bonnie designs. Well, I mean like easy in comparison to everything else that needs to be done. And once that's done, you just need to replace the songs that play out of the speakers and then boom, you got working stage shows. I don't know if Foxy would need to have his own section or if you'd want to like add that off off to the side or if you want to use the the kind of like separate stage that's on some of the Chuck E. Cheese stages. I don't know, it depends on the location, if it actually has one. But other than that, that's just more construction work. Now, what makes this different than your typical kid's play joint, you ask? Well, it does actually have the FNAF characters, not infringing on copyright because Scott would be doing this all himself. There is another aspect of the place that I think would make this even more unique and bring in more sales. FNAF is a horror franchise after all, and for some reason a whole load of these kids love being scared crapless by the many animatronics. So uh, why shouldn't this location offer a spooky surprise for anyone willing to come after dark? Much like how Security Breach will have a day and night cycle, why not let the restaurants have the same? Where instead of closing at 9pm, they swap to a creepy and horror themed joint where the kids can come to get scared while eating pizza and playing games. You know, the lights can flicker, you have people dressed up. Like a year-round haunted house. We could even get some of the games we see in Pizzeria Simulator, like Fruity Maze and Midnight Motorist, in real, physical arcade machines. All you need is a TV monitor, people do it all the time on YouTube. It would actually be an incredible idea that would suck in a lot more people, and increase profits late into the night. This also works for adults who are fans of the series, who may not want to deal with the children and the kid-friendly atmosphere that the location would have during the day. This time frame would feature actors in the FNAF suits, but not Springlock suits because, well, <laughs> we all know how that ends. But this would be just like a Halloween haunt for our Canadian friends or whatever Disney does. It's like Halloween Horror Nights or whatever it's called over there. People in costumes who can't touch but aim to scare, maybe jiggling some doors or hiring actors working as kids or patrons who get lured away, maybe even make Making a nightmare Fredbear suit. There is so much that you can do. Oh, you can have like Foxy slowly peek out from behind it unless someone like looks or something like that. You can have him slowly peek out and then you can. Oh, 
Eventually, of course, you could expand, opening more fast grill locations at the other closed Chuck E. Cheese's. And I feel like Chuck E. Cheese would be down for that too, because the resulting competition could help boost their sales as well, since there would be kids who don't want to go to a horror-themed joint at night, but have a newly ignited or rediscovered joy for pizzeria arcades and animatronic bands. And hell, even as a joke, you could open up Chica's Party World, because you all we all know that Scott's gonna have some form of, like, ARG with these locations if this is actually a thing. Scott, I have an idea for that too. Hit me up. The menu would serve pizza, obviously, but also themed meals like Chica's chicken wings or Bonnie's breakfast for dinner, since, you know, eggs. Maybe Foxy's flapjacks? It will definitely use a little work, but I'm honestly thinking it would taste and look incredible, both the menu and the food respectively. I have a design in mind, but let's be honest, I can't show my whole hand, can I? No, I actually gotta leave some stuff to actually hopefully make this a thing. So, uh, cause you know, if there's some mystery, Scott might actually like, you know, cause we all know how he loves mystery. And Scott, by the way, I'm happy to help. I love this series and would travel to see a Fazbear restaurant like this happen. And if you go with the Florida location, like I suggested, everything is open, so you're already good to go. Maybe not morally speaking, but just like roleplay William Afton and you'll be fine. So, share this video with Scott on Reddit and any other media you can so he can help. See it. Sky Daddy Scott, please make this a thing and please let me help. I promise I will be professional and I won't actually call you Sky Daddy Scott to your face. The menu is simple, since it's on a monitor and needs to be seen at a distance. With a red border and simple sans serif text, describing the various dishes and listing prices, with images of the dishes of the four major characters on each of the screens. Freddy's Pizza, Chica's Chicken Wings, Bonnie's Breakfast for Dinner, and Foxy's Ultimate Nachos. I was going to do Ultimate Fries, but kids are going to find nachos more exciting than fries, even if the whole alliteration thing makes sense. And while the horror events are focused on adults, the majority of the fan base and patrons are going to be children. Hopefully not missing ones. Obviously, you can also offer alcoholic beverages like beer and perhaps margaritas for the parents of the kids during the day and all the adults that will be coming in during the horror nights, more on that later. But other than that, it's a fairly straightforward menu. The menu has to be simple for the kids and anyone looking from a distance, and this is the kind of stuff I actually went to school for. <laughs> I went over the interior design in the last part briefly, but only offered ideas instead of actually providing examples. So let's do that. Like I said last time, I think the purple sections of the wall should be replaced with red and black squares like we see in the original maps. And the white and black squares with the red outlines on the walls should go around the joint as well. We've seen the interior in the first few games, so we might as well just recreate something similar. The booths could just be repainted or they could be separated into sections based on what animatronic is your favorite. Same with the party tables, with sections for Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy, with posters for each character indicating those sections, as well as banners to indicate it overhead so you can see it at a glance. The stage may come with a separate section for Foxy, known as the Galaxy Stage for Chuck E. Cheese, which would easily be converted into Pirate's Cove. It's already a circle, you just put up a curtain. The arcade is probably the biggest reason anyone went to Chuck E. Cheese, the second being the recycled pizza conspiracy, and the third being because of the characters. However, the kids this time around will be coming for the FNAF characters and be staying for the arcade. The arcade could be filled with the normal games we see at normal Chuck E. Cheese's. Skee-ball, whack-a-mole, basketball, knock-a-clown, all the rest. However, the biggest showstoppers could be FNAF-themed versions of these games. Whack-a-mole could be whack a mini Rena, and Knock-a-Clown, you know, the one where you like throw the balls at the clown or like you throw them at his teeth, could be Popping Balloon Boy's balloons. There could be a photo booth that puts in a nightmare animatronic or spring trap behind the people in the booth for a real scare, and you could include custom games like Fruity Maze, Midnight Motorist, and Security Puppet. There are plenty of people who've made their own arcade cabinets. Take this one from the YouTube channel I Like To Make Stuff. Bob does an incredible job. And all Scott would really need to do is code full versions of these games. Oh no, a game dev having to code new games, so difficult. Actually, not even new games, games that he's already made, just full versions. The games would be incredibly popular and would result in high revenue since they wouldn't really provide tickets, so they'd just be spending coins to play real FNAF games, but getting nothing other than that in return so your prize counter doesn't lose anything. This is how the businesses think. They could also make machines for arcade versions of the original FNAF games, maybe having buttons that flip through cameras and you need to find Foxy before he gets to you or something along those lines. The prize counter could have a real version of the FNAF puppet box there. 
playing its signature music to provide a reason for why it's still closed. However, this could potentially be opened at night during the horror nights. If not, the person working at the prize counter could simply be dressed like the puppet. The prize counter could offer things similar to the one from Help Wanted, and offering signature items such as stuffed baskets of exotic butters, which have already been made by Funko. They could also offer FNAF Funko Pop figures, with rarer ones being valued higher, as well as potentially Switch and console versions of the games, along with the smaller prizes that are just meant to keep people from getting the big prizes by saving up. You know, the kids will impulse buy them. That's why they're there. This could also feature recreations of things like the Lore Keeper ending certificate, which you could potentially get by presenting something given to you after beating all three of the FNAF 6 games. You know, the ones in the custom cabinets I mentioned. There is way more we can talk about this, trust me. Now, the Horror Nights are what I find the most interesting out of these new ideas, with maybe these happening once or twice a week instead of every night like I said last time, <laughs> thinking logistically and knowing that most people won't want to work all the nights. 9pm would be when they would normally close, so instead, how about closing for an hour while the team sets up for a special treat for all who dare to return? The restaurant could be lit with black lights, revealing blood stains on the wall along with handprints and maybe some text written in blood, or paint that shows up under a black light and not during the day. The lights in the bathrooms could be flickering and most of the arcade machines would be off, aside from any that make loud noises, distract well, or could scare you. Ski ball, basketball, balloon popping for example, as well as any custom ones like the FNAF 6 Lorekeeper minigames, or if any of the 8-bit minigames from FNAF 2 were recreated. Obviously they would include jump scares at the end. The food would be limited to whatever you wanted, probably taking away the breakfast for dinner, and you could have actors walking around in nightmare themed suits with the animatronics program to make sudden movements, since they need to move to keep their servos from locking up, but they can't really walk around. The music that plays could be replaced with atmospheric and scary themed music, like what we use for our videos, with periodic screams and maybe a couple faded door shakes and calls from Phone Guy, making sure that Scott Coffin makes an appearance in the first Freddy's location. This would be the first pizzeria to do something like this, as of my knowledge, and the possibilities are endless. It would be a great first date, as long as you're both into it, and it would increase profits tenfold, basically turning the place into a diet bar with horror elements. Keeping the place open until 2am when you have last call at 1 or 1.30, I don't know, I don't know how bars work, I turned 19 and then I didn't really go to bars and then the whole pandemic thing happened so I can't really go to bars now. Yeah, I don't know how bars work. I could talk about cash flow and investments, but that doesn't really interest you, I'm sure, because I have thought a lot about this and other opportunities that this would present. So like I said last time, if you want a real FNAF location, share this with Scott on Reddit, Twitter, even though he doesn't use it, Steam, wherever you can. Share it with Matt, Pat, Daco, and Markiplier, so maybe they can see it and get interested too. Or maybe send it to Scott, because I'm pretty sure they have at least more of a direct line than I do. I just say, Sky Daddy Scott, please. So there's always been this desire from the community for a real Freddy Fazbear's, and it's been present since the first game, because for some reason they all think that it's a good idea to have a restaurant whose fictional series is built around the murder of unknowing kids to have a real world counterpart. And while I do believe that it would make an incredible amount of money, and it could be an outlet for Scott to divulge some more lore to us, there are plenty of sick people out there. So sick, in fact, that they might just want to recreate the games, and may just take on the role of William Afton. And plenty of people have said that they're willing to die at a real Freddy Fazbear's, as long as they get to contribute to making the FNAF story real. And that's honestly probably why Scott has at one point said that he didn't want to make one. But is this really the case? Has Scott just ignored the massive opportunity he has in front of him in the form of a real Freddy Fazbear's? Well, maybe not, but it's definitely not going to happen anytime soon. Let me explain. We know how dedicated Scott is to dates, both in-game and IRO, when releasing or talking about his games. He released FNAF 2 87 days after the first, like how we were all focused on the bite of 87 from the first game. Any date that he has put in the series has been solid, and even if things are changing, he always stuck to the bite of 87 and the bite of 83. Dates have always been important to Scott. And as any fan of the series that has at least tried their hand at their own timeline can tell you, FNAF 3 takes place 30 years in the future. In fact, the events of FNAF 3 take place in around 2023. And while that's quite the coincidence in-game, because like 30 years in 2023, 
I don't know why I think there's a coincidence. I think just maybe because they both have threes. Anyway, the thought is that perhaps, while we may not get a real Freddy Fazbear's this year or the next, that 2023 is a possibility for when a real Freddy Fazbear's or even a real Fazbear Frights could open. I mean, if he started planning now, it would definitely take a while, right? Hell, maybe he's already started planning, but now he has to wait because of COVID or he's just planning on opening it up in 2023. And by Fazbear Frights, I mean the location of the third FNAF game, not the book series. And I mean, they are going to need a set for the upcoming FNAF movie, whenever it ends up going out, so maybe this is all just getting us prepared for a real FNAF. I mean, there was that Nicolas Cage FNAF movie ripoff that I'm sure was just a cash grab trying to capitalize on the FNAF movie hype before the actual FNAF movie came out, but could this be what Scott was planning from the beginning? Getting everyone hyped for the possibility of a real location, or what a real location would look like in his mind with the movie and the books which expand on the lore, because he was planning to open one for 2023 at the same time that Fazbear Frights would have opened in the FNAF universe. It would make sense, especially for Scott. And he's really running out of ways to give us more lore hints at this point. He's already released three full novels along with like nine books that all have three shorter stories inside. And those, and especially the Fazbear Frights books, yeah, don't think I didn't notice the name, all had insane lore clues that helped us distinguish parts of the series that we had been previously confused about. Like how William had survived being in a blocked off room for 30 years without food or water because he was possessed by a kid. It also explains how he survived the fire from FNAF 3 and FNAF 6, and how he managed to get a hard drive in order to possess it before FNAF VR, so it could get scanned into the game and then he would become basically immortal. But now we've seen source code being used as a clue, the names of photo files that we've had to access with notepad being a clue, audio files, voice actor listings, hell at one point I decoded the name of a color and how it relates to the Emily family as a clue. Not to mention the countless hours of searching through all the games and then the logbook and oh my God, and yet still nobody has figured out FNAF 4. There aren't many new things he could do to bring us innovative ways for hints, unless that's what this place would be for. And he used this place as an ARG of sorts, where you can get lore clues and maybe even some answers to things like FNAF 4, or even who caused the bite of 87. So we can have a definitive answer instead of being stuck on either Mangle or Toy Chica or Golden Freddy. Hell, pull a WandaVision and base the series off a new decade each week so we can actually be there for the bite of 87 when it takes place and then gets shut down and then it reopens the next week as a new decade. Huh? And for those people saying Scott already said he wouldn't do it, first of all, people change their mind all the time, whether the reason is financial or not. And this place would be a huge success, especially after Chuck E. Cheese closed over like 30 locations. The timing couldn't be better at this point, honestly. The big problem with this is the danger, and while I'm sure Scott would have as many security measures as he could, we need to remember what the story of the games is. It's about kids dying in these restaurants, and by one of the creators of the restaurants, no less. I'm sure that Scott doesn't want to end up like Henry. These issues only heighten when you look at the discussions on this. I've seen comments on our videos talking about how they'd be happy to get die and get stuffed inside of Freddy, and how they'd just be happy to die in Freddy Fazbear's. I'm not even going to make a joke about how you would rather want to be stuffed into Choi Chica, but also the comments about how they want to kill someone in a FNAF location, or how they want someone to kill someone in a FNAF location, no. Or how they want someone to go missing and the story of the games to be real. Look, I know you guys love the game, okay? I love it too. The story is incredible and cryptic in all the best ways. But what the hell? Like comments from the last video talking about what could be in like a real FNAF. Someone had commented, bro, if this became a thing, I would want to get murdered so I can possess a suit. That would be so epic. Ah, uh, yes. No. It wouldn't be epic because you'd be dead. Possession isn't a real thing in the real world, okay? And even if it was, we don't know how it works. It's not like if there's a real world version of FNAF, that agony will be what determines you possessing something, okay? If possession was real, it wouldn't be something that simple, and so it wouldn't be something you can control. And at that point, if you want to be murdered, it's not murder. Okay? It's self-assisted murder. Because, you know, if I say the actual word, YouTube's gonna flag this video. But that wouldn't cause you agony, you'd be happy to die. It wouldn't even work in, in the FNAF universe sense. But it's reasons like those that will ultimately get Scott to shut down this idea permanently. 
And even if they're meant as jokes, he probably wouldn't want to take the chance because, well, they may not all be jokes. And if anyone got hurt or worse because of something he opened, honestly, I don't think any of us would be able to forgive ourselves if we were the cause of that. Like if we were in Scott's shoes and we opened a Fazbear restaurant and then someone ended up getting killed because of the games and the restaurant, I wouldn't be able to handle that, I know that. Even for asking for it so much that he felt like he had to do it. So stop saying crazy shit like that. You know for a fact that you don't want to get killed at the place, even if it's what the original games do or whatever. That's not fun, it's not cool, don't say it. It won't help the situation. So if you really want a real FNAF, stop saying it so you can get killed there, okay? I can't believe that I had to say that.